So, uh, you know, I was talking about how I've uh, been a White Power gang member, man, and, uh, you know, uh, it's a situation of how, you know, that ended up, you know, being uh, the, the downfall that they put me in prison for life, you know, because, uh, you, know, you know, I became a dropout, so I wasn't involved in the, the, the White Power gangs and the whole situation and whatnot. And, you know, Orange County was too uh, too hot for me, so, I, you know, everybody, you know, tried to, trying to get me around there because, you know, everybody knew who I was. So, you know, we uh, we packed up and got out of Orange County and you know, moved out to the, 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 the desert, man, the high desert out in Barstow. You know, I was hanging out out there, and, you know, it was cool. I had a nice job. I was doing my thing, man, and uh, well, I was managing these apartments. And uh, one of the guys in the apartments, some black dude, man, where I bought weed from him all the time, you know. And uh, I uh, was... Uh, at the house, and I started paying attention, man, and, uh, like, a block and a half away was this junior high school, and these kids, man, when they'd come off a lunch break or off of school, they were going to this dude's house and, and, and buying pot, you know? I mean, you know, it's pot, and, you know, it's, it, but they're kids, you know? You don't sell drugs to kids, you know? Do you want somebody selling drugs to your fucking kid? I know I don't. I mean, my kid's going to do drugs. I, I, want to, I want to know. I want to either be there so I know he's safe or, you know what I mean? I want some weirdo selling to him. So, you know, me and my brother, Joel again, you know, he, uh, we, uh, we decided we were going to, we were going to fucking, uh, take this dude's pot and, and teach him a little lesson, you know, let him know why we were taking it and what was going on and everything. So, so we went by there one day and like, I knocked on the door like I was going to buy some weed and he opened the door and my, my brother stuffed a shotgun in his face. You know, we went in and we, we robbed him. We, we didn't hurt nobody or anything. We, we just took all his money and his dope and explained to him what was going on and why we did it. And uh, we left. You know, and about two hours later, you know, we're sitting there and my dad, man, and the cops come knocking on my friggin' door. And uh, they arrested me and my brother for, for a residential burglary. Uh, dude called the damn cops because we stole his drugs. I mean, and... Well, he told him that we we took a whole bunch of other shit that you know we didn't we really didn't take and the only thing that the reason I got busted was you know my, my wife had borrowed some porn from his wife on, on DVD and I had him sitting on top of my entertainment cabinet and uh, he had his name on him. The cop said, "See, you stole that and arrested me for burglary." I went to court and uh, the first thing the district attorney threw out there was my history. Hey, look, this guy is, is a lifelong white power gang member. You know, his very first conviction as a juvenile was in the commission of a hate crime, carrying a bomb to blow up a fucking church. And that was the thing they stipulated all the way through my trial about how I was white and he was black and this was a racially motivated crime when racism had not a goddamn thing to do with it. It had to do with he was selling drugs to kids. But we could, we, when we put that out there that that's what happened, the judge struck it from the fucking the, the record, wouldn't let the jury hear it. And all the way through my trial, the DA put out there that it was, it was a racial thing, it was a racial thing, it was a racial thing. And, and in the end, my judge was black, of course. Uh, when, you know, at the end of the trial, and I got found guilty, they, they gave me 29 years of life for a residential burglary for some pot. Because the only reason I got that life sentence is because I was a white power gang member. If I'd have committed the exact same crime in Orange County, where, where you know, there's more white power gangs and more more racial shit going on over there, I'd have committed the same crime in Orange County. I wouldn't have got this sentence because they wouldn't have put all that shit in there. So I, I came in uh, on 29 years of life for a residential burglary and, and in coming in on that, you know. That costed me my whole life out there. You know, I, I was doing good. I would, I had been out for, I, I think, six years, uh, you know, living good, doing right, had a good job, had a good wife, new, a new baby. He was like three at the time, you know, and uh, I, I got arrested. And the handcuffs weren't locked before my old lady packed and was gone because of the, the white power gang shit. She didn't know anything about that. That wasn't part of my life that I had told her. I, I had met her out there in Barstow, and I wasn't living as that kind of dude. But they threw that out there as, as the first thing. That's the first thing they told her. Oh, you know, this guy's a known gang member and white, white power organization and whatnot and whatnot and whatnot. And she's like, what? No. And boom, she was gone. So I came in on that sentence, man, and 
I was sitting in uh, uh, at a San Bernardino friggin' county jail down there. And, uh, you know, I, even on this S&Y side, here's where that prison gang on the S&Y side's bullshit, man. You know, I'm from Orange County. I'm in San Bernardino. And every day I'm in a fight because they're politicking and set tripping on Orange County and San Bernardino. And, you know, I, 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 I come up here to, to state and uh, I, I go to my appeal uh, putting out all the the wrongs that the, the, the judge done in my in my trial and and all the, the bad shit that happened and she uh I, I lost my appeal. And uh so I completely gave up. You know, I, I've been down ten right now. You know, for, for, for five years I, I completely gave up. I uh I didn't care about none, I didn't go to no groups, I didn't take no classes, I didn't do nothing. All I did was sit around and get high and politic. I mean, I wasn't from one of these S&Y gangs, but I, you know, I know every, I know people from every one of them, and I, you know, I associate with everybody, so I'm involved in everything, running around beating people up on the S&Y yard for, for stupid ass shit, and then, uh, you know, then I finally, uh, you know, uh, I was sitting in the hole, and I get a letter, you know, I hadn't got a letter in two years from anybody, you know, and I, cause, you know, I gave up, I, I wasn't. And then I get a letter from my oldest daughter, man, and uh, she's got a bunch of pictures in it, man. She's got two kids. You know, so now I got these grandkids. And all of a sudden, the sun's bright, and flowers are blooming, and you know, I give a shit now. So, you know, I'm doing these classes, and, and here again, I'm, you know, biting at it because the dudes that are teaching these classes are, are that way. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're bad. And, and, you know, everything, all these classes, they come down to a religion. And, you know, I don't believe in their God. So I, I have problems with that. And, and uh, I, uh, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And then I went to board uh, four months ago. Um, out of the blue, for some reason, this COVID shit got a bunch of people taking the board way before their 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 MRD dates or EPRD, whatever it is, a bunch of people take it. And, uh, you know, I had my ducks in order. I had everything. I had all the groups. I had the younger management. I had the college courses. I had the GED. You know, I had the vocational trades. I, I had all that. I had my ducks in order. I had the right answers to every freaking question. And then it came down to one thing. Donovan, I went to the program. I was on my grounds. I'm old enough, so I was out on the oldness grounds, and uh, our rule out there was no anything that could get us in trouble on those grounds, nothing illegal. Well, I found a weapon, a knife, and our rule was we turn it in. No matter whose it was or what, I took it to the program office and I turned it in. And the cop didn't care that I was turning in or anything. He saw me with a weapon, and I went to the hole. That was the one thing they harped on, is that I got caught with a weapon, and they wouldn't listen that... I was turning it in. I wasn't using it. I wasn't doing nothing with it. It didn't belong to me. I, I was turning it in. And they, they didn't care about that. They said, oh, you're a gang member. You're always in trouble. You're, you're this, you're that, you're that. That was your weapon. You, you weren't turning it in. You just happened to get seen with it. And I'm like, no, read the reports. Read the reports. And, you know, so I got a seven-year denial for that. And, again, I gave up for just a minute. You know, my daughter, uh, sent me some videograms of my granddaughter and uh you know i i had sent her a, a thor's hammer a while back when I, I got a new one so i sent my granddaughter mine and she's wearing it she's 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 running around with it and my daughter's yelling at me because you know she gets in trouble for it she's not supposed to work at preschool but she won't take it off and so now i'm in trouble so now i care again you know and uh i want to get out so I, i'm trying to uh make the steps to get out and try to do the things to get out, try to associate with the people to get out. And it's hard. It's a struggle every day because the people that I got to do that with are those people. But I'm still this, this gangster, that, you know what I mean? How do you change what you were your whole life to the total opposite thing you hated the most your whole life? And, and be okay with it. It's, it's not. You know what I mean? And then uh, I got a, I got stabbed uh, 
down there in the cattle pit, and uh, I was uh, on, on another number, and the whole uh, uh, enemy thing it wasn't a, wasn't a, wasn't a thing when I came over here anymore. And uh, one of the dudes that was involved in my stabbing showed up here in my building about a month ago, and uh, trying to be friends with me, and uh, I'm. I made that work. How do, you, how do you explain that? You know, this dude tried to kill me, and I made the association with him work. So that's I'm hoping that you know that show was going to show the board next time I go that hey, this dude is changed. This dude is doing that. He's no longer that guy. You know what I mean?